Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and it's also Casing Tuesday, which means we're gonna take a card out of the catalog and we're gonna give it a makeover. And the best part of it is that you can join in and do this with me and join our Facebook group and post and share your card with others. And we also welcome you to come over there and comment on other people's cards. Um, there's a bunch of us that do this every single week, so uh, it's it's a group effort, and it's so cool to see how many different variations we can come up with different cards. So let me share with you what our card is today. Let's see if I can find the link here. This is our little card that we're giving a makeover to today. And uh, it's so cute. I, I love this uh, stamp set. This one can only, the stamp set that's used in the sample can only be earned um, as part of Stampin' Rewards. And you need to spend $150 to, um, on an order to get uh, those rewards. Um, and then you could choose this one as one of your rewards. It's very cute. But I love the layout of this uh, card. It's, it's I, th I think it's a simple layout if you break it down a little bit. And um, so I'm gonna share with you our little sketch here. Oops, here's the sketch. So um, those two front panels are two and a quarter by four and one eighths. Um, there's also kind of um, another panel behind them. For my card, I actually took that uh, middle one, the three and a half by five inch panel away uh, because it didn't make sense for my card. So, you know, you can choose to delete um, certain layers if they don't fit what you want to do for your card. And our card bases, our card fronts, um, our typical card front for Stampin' Up! is four and a quarter by five and a half because it works really well with the size card stock we use. Okay, so are you ready to get started? Um, I am going to talk to all of you at the end um, because I get distracted and I don't wanna go off on tangents. I wanna make sure that I get a chance to talk to you without distractions. So um, I will move, I'm moving some things around on my screen. Okay, let me make sure I've got my camera set up. I hope it's working this morning. Okay, here we go. All right, here is my card for today. And I entitled this card, Happy Hedgehog Flies a Kite. Isn't he cute? I just love it when we can put little cute little animals um, in with other objects and stuff. So I um, attached this little piece of baker's twine to make the kite look like it was uh, actually flying. So I think it's kind of a fun, a fun little scene that I've created and I'm going to share with you my tips on how I did that in case you want to do that um, same thing with your supplies. So let's talk about uh, the supplies I used. This is the Kite Delight stamp set and it is from the Jan to June mini catalog and um, this one will not be carrying over so if you like it um, make sure you get it before June. Um, at the end of May um, it will appear on the retiring list and then we won't be sure how much supply we have. It goes on while supplies last then so right now you should still be able to get this no problem. Problem, but um, keep that in mind if you want to. It's a very cute whimsical set. Okay and then we have the Happy Hedgehogs bundle which is like this. We have the punch, the Hedgehog Builder Punch and the Happy Hedgehog stamp set. If you buy them together in the bundle you can save 10% and this is also in the mini catalog but it will be carrying over into the annual catalog so um, you'll be able to get this one for a while longer so that's great. Then I also for the background use the, this is the scalloped contours dies and um, I use them to create these layers right here. In the original sample they used something similar. I'm not even sure which die they used, but I wanted to emulate that with the supplies I had. So I used um, the second largest scallop to create these layers here. 
All right, I think we're ready to get started and create this little um, card. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a card base. I'm using soft seafoam cardstock, and it's this piece measures 11 by four and a quarter, and I scored it in half at the five and a half inch mark. So that will be our base. And then I created two layers, um, the basic white layer and the balmy blue layer. And what I did was I pre-did this. I ran this through my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine with the second large, largest scallop contour dies. So one in balmy blue and one in basic white. And then I'm going to take my trimmer And we're going to trim off right at that first scallop. We're going to trim off the sides of this so we make them kind of long and skinny. So we'll do that for this. And do that for the other side. If you don't have dies or a um, die cutting machine and you don't have um, dies like this that you can use. I would just cut a rectangle in the same size. Let me give you the measurements of what I would use if I didn't use the scallop contours. I would do, uh, it's, it's kind of in between two and three eighths by two and a half. So you can decide maybe two and three eighths by about four and a half. And that would give you kind of the same size piece to work with if you just wanted to work with a rectangle. We're going to do the same trimming for the basic white. I'm just lining this up on the score groove and right down the center of my, my scallop right here. Just cut. Pretty easy to do because you have a, a point to cut at. All right, actually these look kind of cute too. You could save them for something um, and use them on a project using just the the little little leftover pieces. Okay. So we're gonna create a little bit of a scene on this the bottom of this basic white piece. So I'm going to take my hedgehog and memento ink. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to position a hedgehog. We're actually going to stamp the sky twice um, because it's going to make it a whole lot easier for you to position the kite string on there. So we can stick this aside for right now. Okay, so you're going to want to stamp your hedgehog. You want him kind of tilting up a little bit. Okay, and then while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and stamp some grass. And I know I'm stamping this in black, but I'm gonna come over top of it in a moment and color it with my Granny Green Apple Blends. Um, because um, I'm not going to be coloring this guy, we'll just wait a second to color the grass. And the reason I stamped this in black is because all my stamping today is going to be in black um, even though this is kind of line um, art I want everything to kind of match um, the the type of ink that I'm using so I'm going to just go over it with um, a blends okay so while I have this out here we're also going to stamp the little hedgehog onto a piece of very vanilla cardstock And I'm stamping over here, up near the top, up near the side, because I'm going to come in with my um, punch in just a moment. It's a little easier to color what before punching, so we're gonna color first. Um, and then we need to stamp a couple other things. We need a piece, a scrap piece of basic white. And we're going to stamp this kite. I really like this, um, floral kite but there's other kites in the set as well so if you don't like the floral one you can do a different um, stamping okay and then we're going to stamp the sun 
and we're going to stamp this greeting. Another year flies by, happy birthday, but I'm not gonna use the whole greeting, but I am going to stamp the whole greeting. Okay, I think we've done all of our stamping, so let's put our ink pad away. Okay, so let's, let's first color this guy. So we're gonna dump out all the Stampin' Blends that I need. And I'm going to use ivory and bronze. These two come in a set. And I'm gonna use the ivory on the underbelly. Do the ear and the little legs. Okay, and then we're going to do the little um, quills in bronze. We are going to have, we do have other colors of beige and brown um, skin tones um, and right now a lot of them are on back order but these ones, I think the ivory and bronze are available right now so that's why I chose to use them. And they they work very well for this little hedgehog guy. Of course, you could be really creative, and the hedgehog doesn't have to be in traditional colors. You could make him um, whatever color you want. He could be a punk hedgehog, or a rainbow hedgehog, or a green hedgehog, a blue hedgehog, whatever color you want. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and punch him out, and you'll see since I have to kind of match right up here, that's why I stamped him up in that top uh, right hand corner. So I can kind of fit him in, or her, could be a her. All right, so that's my hedgehog. And then we're going to come in and color. We don't have to color this. We do actually have to color the grass. So let's do that right now before I forget. I'm just gonna go over. This is Granny Apple. I guess I chose light. I could have gone with the dark. Either one probably will work because this is just line art. So I'm just going over all of those blades. So now the grass looks green. And then we're going to come in and color some of these flowers. So I'm using polished pink. And I'm just gonna do the petals of the flowers. And just choose, you could do all the florals in the same color if you wanted. This is Highland Heather Dark. I think the polished pink I used, it was the light one. Sometimes it depends on the intensity, how bright I wanna go. Okay, I think I'm almost done. Okay, this is Balmy Blue and I'm using the dark one. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and color the flower centers in yellow. And we'll do the sunshine also in yellow, since I have this out here. My Daffodil Delight is almost dead. <laughs> I have a new one, it's sitting in a box in the hall, in the box I haven't opened up yet. I have I had a busy weekend, so I haven't opened up the box that arrived on Friday. It's sitting there waiting for me. All right, but okay, it made it through. It's still holding out. 
Okay, so we've got all those colors. Don't need this one anymore. And now I'm going to use, this is Soft Sea Foam Light. And I'm just going to come through and give the kite a background color. This is very light. If you wanted to, maybe you could even leave it white. I just kind of thought of this as like a field of flowers. I wanted to have a like a nice bright kite for the sky. Okay. Right, so that's all there is to the coloring. So we're going to need to cut out the kite. Kite is pretty easy because it's like you just cut along straight lines. Pretty easy to do. Now the sun takes a little longer to cut out. So I pre-cut the sun. There, I cut out the sun. <laughs> I didn't want to spend time fussy cutting the sun um, because of all the little points. It just takes a little longer. So let's come along here. Um, well, first, just I'm going to cut away this greeting. away from this thing. I, I didn't think it really made that much sense. Also, it made the greeting really large and I didn't really have room for all those words on the front of my card. So sometimes you just cut away what you need. Okay. All right. Okay, I think we've got most of the pieces for the card now. So now it's assembly time. So I've got some, this is Essentials Baker's Twine, and it actually comes in five colors. I used up the white in here, but I actually really like this uh, vanilla contrast for the white background. So I'm just gonna cut myself a little length of the Baker's Twine. That's more than I need, but what I want to do is I'm going to glue down the um, onto the paws and then I'm going to put this one over top. So it just really helps with everything. So I'm going to put a little dot of Tombow on each of the paws. And then I'm going to take the end of this baker's twine and kind of position it like the little hedgehog is holding it. And I'm going to just press my fingers down on there for a moment because I actually want to make sure it sticks on there. It should bond with the fibers pretty well. Um, for this kite, I'm going to put four dimensionals on the back. While I'm holding that down, actually it should be good now. So just get my fingers off of there. Okay, so I'm just gonna twist that around. And first let's put our little hedgehog on here. And you can reinforce the adhesive by putting a little glue on the paws as well. And that's gonna help hold that baker's twine string in place. And then you're gonna take that and just cover up the stamped hedgehog. So now you can see how that just kind of helped with the placement of everything. And it just took a second to stamp that first hedgehog down. We didn't have to color it. So it just kind of helps. And the, st the punched hedgehog covers up the other one entirely. Okay, so I'm gonna just leave that string for now because what I wanna do, um, part of the kite is gonna be kind of coming off a little bit. So let's position all of our pieces on the card. Oh, and we're going to have, um, the sun is going to have a dimensional as well. So let's add that right now. Okay. So let's bring in the card. I need scissors still. Putting 
everything away. Okay, so we've got our balmy blue piece and our basic white piece. So just kind of figure out how you wanna um, position it. And then we'll bring in our Tombow. I'm gonna add Tombow to the back of this. And I'll just kind of following my sample. But before you press down on that, you can kind of just decide, okay, is that piece gonna work on there? That looks good. And then we'll put Tombow on this piece. And then just kind of position the other one on here. I know some of you are gonna have trouble with these crooked layers, right? Sometimes that's hard to do, but I really love trying different things with my um, cards. I love this challenge because I am following someone else's design. <laughs> so I don't, I'm not hypercritical, oh, the layers are crooked. I'm just kind of going by what the original design was and that helps me get over um, the fear of, you know, it doesn't look quite right because someone thought it was good enough to put in a catalog that thousands of people would see. So the layout um, is a good one. So now I just want to kind of position this and decide, okay, where do I want my kite to come up? And I think right about there is good. And I'm going to take some of that off. Okay, so you can kind of see I've stuck, let me hold this up to the camera a little better. You can kind of see I stuck the baker's twine on the back of that dimensional. So now I can kind of just play with it a little bit and I'm gonna bend this a little bit and the kite is gonna come off of here like that. Okay, and then we can add the little sun and we're also going to add happy birthday. So let's figure out where the happy birthday is going to go and then we can position the sun. It helps with the little greeting if you're not perfectly straight on them. So I think, I think that will work. Let's put, pin down the sun. Put it right here maybe. And then we'll add the birthday first. And for the birthday, I, I am kind of putting it, I think it's a little bit closer to being in line with the bottom, a little bit. And then we'll add happy. On a bit of an angle and then finally I'm going to add some brushed brass butterflies and if you are um, if you are one of my customers and you place an order with me in the month of April and you spend at least $50 with me using um, the host code um, let me there's my host code for April. Um, you're gonna get uh, a package of these brushed brass butterflies sent to you in May. Um, I'm gonna send everyone a package of these and they are so nice. They're very flat, which is great uh, for uh, cards and stuff. Um, so it doesn't bulk out too much and stick out. So I'm just gonna add a big one and a little one to my card and it just when it hits the light it just adds just a little bit of shine um, I did you can see down below I did color this one with the polished pink Stampin' Blends but then I decided just to go with the regular color so you can add a little color to your butterflies if you don't want them to be that brass color um, you can um, choose a, a darker um, blend and um, 
this one I added it and because it's like metallic it does kind of pull up a little bit but if you dab it off with a um, like a piece of scrap paper you will still retain some of the color so it will look kind of cute okay so there you go we've got the two cards and look I love how this little hedgehog is holding the string it, it brings like kind of a tactile element to it and the string you know it can move around a little bit but it's pinned on the top and the bottom and so it's kind of fun to create just a little scene happy hedgehog flies a kite so cool right all right let's come over to you and see how you're doing today let's come back over hello hello all right i think i talked about most um things all the supplies that i used today um you can find down below in the description of this video and you also can find it on my blog my blog is the first link and it's kind of like my hub i've got um photos of the project I did. I've got photos of the Casing Tuesday sketch in case you want to follow along. I've got the supply list and I've got other information about Stampin' Up! specials and things like that that are happening right now. So that is kind of your hub and that's where kind of everything kind of resides if you need to find it in the future if you're looking for past tutorials and everything like that click over to my blog and that's where you'll find all of that stuff but um, all of that information is down in the description of the video um, I already told you what you would get if you spent $50 with me but as long as you place an order that's over $15 with me you will um, get one of my tutorials for free so um, just as long as uh, an order is over 15 you'll get that tutorial so if you spend $50 you'll also get a tutorial to choose from all right um, I think I think I've talked about everything so let's talk to you guys and see how you're doing we had a kind of a nice morning to walk it was overcast but no rain so that made me very happy and but right now it started to rain so i don't think i have to go out for the rest of the day so that's okay <laughs> all right good morning karen from rainy new jersey you sent the rain here i can't believe it karen um because it wasn't raining this morning it must have traveled up the east coast um Thank you, Karen. Karen said my card is, is adorable. Good morning, Kimberly Ann. Good to see you. Good morning, Jody and Amy from Washington. Um, and Dee also has a dreary day. She's in Missouri. Good morning, Ellie from New York. Ellie, do you have rain? Um, good morning, Janine from Indiana. Um, Ellie says punches make life so easy. I love punches. I think they, they are my favorite and I, um, the hedgehog is so cute and you can punch them out and then you can, you know, it was so easy to position that little string because I pre, um, stamped him and then I could punch one and put over top. So cute. So, so cute. Um, uh, Janine agrees punches are good and she says it's a cute card hi Martha I'm glad you joined us and thank you for saying it's um adorable good oh yeah Ellie says uh rained earlier gone now no sun yet yeah we might be waiting a little while for the sun to poke its head out today I guess but oh well uh, if the rain goes away that's that's the most important thing right well I have a um uh, I will have a video for you. I, I'm debating whether or not to move my video up to Thursday because it's Good Friday. Um, maybe you can let me know in the comments if you are going to be around on Friday, if I should do my video on Thursday or Friday this week. Um, so I, I was just debating whether or not to move it up a day or not. Um, so let me know while I'm still here, Thursday or Friday, whatever works for you. Um, of course, the video is recorded, right? So um, you can watch it afterwards. But um, 
I thought maybe some of you might be home on Friday if you work, so that might be a good day to do it. But then, um, I, I don't know. Um, so I'm from Canada, so, you know, all the holidays are different and they've changed over time. And so I'm, I'm completely messed up. I don't even know what a statutory holiday is, or we call them statutory holidays in Canada. They're like federal holidays maybe here. Um, I don't even know all the holidays because I get so confused, you know, Canadian Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving, and then there's like um, Memorial Day here and Victoria Day in Canada. I, I don't know if I'm coming or going sometimes. So my brain knows of all these things and it just can't keep them all pinned down. But um, let's see. Um, Good morning, Nina. Oh my gosh, you're up early. I'm so glad you're here. You're going to have to watch the replay though, because I'm almost at the end of the video. Karen says she'll be around on Friday baking Easter egg bread. Mmm, Karen, I think I want your recipe. I don't think I've ever made Easter egg bread. That sounds delicious. I think I am planning on making a carrot cake. So I don't know if carrot cake is traditionally an Easter cake, but I love carrot cake. And I have cream cheese and carrots on my Instacart order that's coming today, a big bag of carrots. So we're going to, I'm gonna make carrot cake on the weekend. Anyone else like carrot cake? I, I love carrot cake. It's probably one of my favorite cakes, um, but I'm, I'm always interested in new recipes. So Easter egg bread sounds good. Um, Ellie says Thursday is better for her and Amy says Friday works for me. Oh my gosh. Make me feel bad now. I sh maybe I shouldn't have asked. Maybe I should have just kept it on Friday. Well, I'll think about it and um, I, I will either go live on Thursday or Friday, but we will have a video this week and a project sheet on Saturday for you. So um, uh, if you have to catch the replay this week, I, I'm sorry about that, but um, I will definitely um, be doing something at the end of the week. Good morning, Cindy. Cindy loves carrot cake. Oh, good. What kind of carrot cake do you like? I really like the a, like a dark carrot cake because I also really like fruit bread, which I know some people don't like. But um, I I make a Chilean um, Christmas bread um, uh, at Christmas time, and it is very. Um, it has fruit fruit in it, dried fruit and raisins and all of that, and I. I don't know. I, I really like that. I don't know if I liked it as as a little girl, but I I like it now. So I like my um, my uh, carrot cake kind of like on the darker side and I put raisins in mine. I don't know if everyone likes raisins. You can omit the raisins if you don't like it. So um, but anyway, Janine says carrot cake is one of her favorites. Oh, great. I I love it love it the best carrot cake I ever had was on Prince Edward Island um, we were traveling there our son he was in high school and one summer we did like a little trip up to Prince Edward Island in Canada we drove up and there was a little tiny diner on the tip of the island and uh, I ordered a salad and a piece of carrot cake and the carrot cake was phenomenal and I was like I told the server oh this carrot cake's like the best carrot cake I've ever had and she was like you know what I made that carrot cake I make it for for the restaurant and I thought that was so cool you know that that this little diner had like cake made by you know some an employee at the restaurant so that was kind of cool um Cindy also loves fruit cake. Well, see, I think maybe there's a little bit of crossover if you like your raisins in your um, in your uh, carrot cake. So, Janine says she doesn't like the fruit cake concept. Raisins are okay though. The cream cheese frosting is what makes it. I think so. I think cream cheese frosting is like is my favorite. I don't love. Um, cheesecake actually I do love cheesecake but it's too dense for me to eat I will never order um, cheesecake but I love cream cheese frosting because it's kind of like you get a bit of the cream cheese but you don't get the whole density of um, a cheesecake I just I can't do that to my body anymore it, it just will re rebel doesn't like it 
All right. Well, we've talked a lot about Easter stuff and um, cream cheese and frosting and all of that. Oh, Michelle likes carrot cake with pineapple. That sounds good. I like that. I've never, I don't think I've ever made it with pineapple, like maybe crushed pineapple. That sounds good. Uh, Holly says, I'm wearing a, a new Horizon shirt. Yeah, you know what? It is kind of, I don't know where my paper is. Um, it's somewhere. But yes, my my shirt looks a lot like the New Horizons paper. So um, it's, um, if you like this um, pattern, this is a Cuddle Duds. Does anyone know Cuddle Duds? Um, they are, um, they, they make uh, kind of, winter layering shirts and and leggings and all of that and i love their um their shirts um, because they're warm and i love to layer um so um, this is a cuddle duds i don't know if they still have them coles sells uh cuddle duds that's where i got this one so anyway that's just an aside i need to let you guys go i hope you have a great week and i'll see you at the end of the week and um if not i think passover is this weekend and um uh happy easter to all of you and i don't know if you say happy passover but maybe happy passover celebration um so to all of you uh, who celebrate other holidays um i hope you have a good one take care everyone Bye bye